I find it a little difficult to say what the subject matter of this seminar is going to be, because it's too fundamental to give it a title. I'm going to talk about what there is. Now, the first thing, though, uh, that we have to do is to get our perspectives with some background about the basic ideas which influence our everyday common sense, our fundamental notions about what life is about. Ideas of the world 
which are built into the very nature of the language we use and of our ideas of logic and of what makes sense altogether. And these basic ideas I call myth, not using the word myth to mean simply something untrue, but to use the word myth in a more powerful sense. A myth is an image in terms of which we try to make sense of the world.
You, as a human being, you grow out of this physical universe in just exactly the same way that an apple grows off an apple tree. So let's say the tree which grows apples is a tree which apples, using apple as a verb. And a world in which human beings arrive is a world that peoples. And so the existence of people is symptomatic of the kind of universe we live in. Just as hair on a head is symptomatic of what's going on in the organism. But we have been brought up not to feel that we belong in the world. So our popular speech reflects it. We say, I came into this world. You didn't. You came out of it. We say, face facts. We talk about encounters with reality. As if it was a head-on meeting of completely alien agencies. And the average person has the sensation that he is a somewhat that exists inside a bag of skin. A center of consciousness which looks out at this thing and what the hell is it going to do to me? Uh, I recognize you, you kind of look like me and uh, I've seen myself in a mirror and uh, y you look like you might be people. <laughs> so maybe you're intelligent, maybe you can love too. And uh, maybe perhaps you're all right, some of you are anyway. You've got the right color of skin or you have the right religion or whatever it is, you're okay. But there are all those people over in Asia, Africa, and they may not really be people. When you want to destroy someone, you always define them as unpeople. We have this hostility to the external world because of the superstition, the myth, the absolutely unfounded theory that you yourself exist only inside your skin. 
Now I want to propose another idea altogether. Billions of years ago, you were a big bang. But now you're a complicated human being. But so we define ourselves as being only that. If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. And when then we cut ourselves off and don't feel that we are still the Big Bang. But you are. Depends how you define yourself. You are actually, if, if this is the way things started, if there was a Big Bang in the beginning, you're not something that is a result of the Big Bang. You're not something that is a sort of puppet on the end of the process. You are still the process. You are the Big Bang, the original force of the universe coming on as whoever you are. See, when I meet you, I see not just what you define yourself as, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. I see every one of you as the primordial energy of the universe coming on at me in this particular way. I know I'm that too. But we've learned to define ourselves as separate from.